Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the video. It has been a long time I did not shoot something meaningful for the prospective masters and PhD applicants coming to Netherlands. So today I'm in Prague in a hotel. It's like an apartment and I'm making this video for you uh, because I got a lot of questions from my subscribers about uh, the master programs in Netherlands sharing from my own experience so if you don't know me I'm Sambit I do this videos about studying and living in Netherlands check all my other videos in the information card in different playlists for studying masters PhD bachelors and living in Netherlands working in Netherlands and many of other stuff so today I'm going to discuss about in brief uh, about the master's program in Netherlands so it's not similar to the applied science program it's only masters which is research based masters as you do in Netherlands so it's popularly called MSc as contrasted to MS in US so it's master in science in different streams so ideally you need to do 120 ECTS to pass the masters program and graduate from any uh, university in Netherlands research university they are generally called TU like technist university so it's actually it means literally translates to technical universities so moving on to the ECTS I'll cover it later what is meant by ECTS and how you do it talk about the outline of the MSc program so in the MSc program as I did in Delft I think it is more or less similar I have asked some friends from Eindhoven and Utrecht so all the research based masters are more or less similar you need to complete 120 ECTS and out of that it's like depending on the stream you choose maybe electrical or mechanical or computer science computer engineering embedded systems they have different rules which varies from university to university but in general they have a core set of compulsory subjects uh, which have which range between like 25 to 30 ECTS so in our computer science program between 2015 and 17 when I was doing computer science in TU Delft we had 30 ECTS of compulsory courses and each course had like 5 ECTS so what actually ECTS means is uh, I don't want to go into details but um, you can literally translate it as each ECTS indicates the load that you need to do for each subject you need to spend the number of hours each week and so what it means is that if you have five ECTS for a subject it will include uh, all the things like the study load project load exam load uh, number of lectures you need to attend in a week if normally in five ECTS subjects it's like uh, 90 minutes lectures uh, twice a week sometimes it is once a week if the course runs for two quarters so what is actually a quarter in Netherlands they follow a quarterly based uh, education system which is not semester based so in each quarter you need to complete Ideally, they assume that you should complete 60 ECTS because you have to complete 120 in two years. So for 60, you should complete at least 15 ECTS in each quarter. So every three months and you will also have holidays. So you will get ideally two or two and a half months. So that's why the course structure and the whole education system is a bit hectic. It's not that uh, easy to cover take some time to adjust to this system because you have project work daily assignments and a lot of other things so that is what ECTS means so ideally mostly you'll find courses of four five or six ECTS and in our computer science we had like five ECTS almost 99% of the courses some six and three ECTS was very rare so it depends on faculty but I know in master programs it ranges between three to six but the good thing is if you have higher ECTS although it is having load of working on the course but then you take less courses so ideally if you have like five ECTS on average for each course then you need to do maybe like uh, 15 courses because 
the thesis is generally like 45 ECTS which you do in the second year uh, that is the research element in the masters and the rest 75 if you take on an average of 5 ECTS then you need to do 15 courses so it will be like each quarter you do 3 courses which is an average then you can complete in 5 quarters uh, 75 ECTS 15 into 5 and rest this is an ideal picture it varies a lot from faculty to faculty and university to university so don't get me wrong a big thank you for volunteering in all these questions to one of my subscribers whose name is Rohan Desmukh and there are many others like Mr. Mishra and others who asked so many questions regarding the master's program in Netherlands and the structure and in Tew Delft and other universities so 50% of this content of the video is based on these questions and 50% I have made it myself based on my experience but still I might miss a lot of points that you want to know so I will cover them later based on the questions so if you like this video till this moment please smash the thumbs up button and spread and share to your friends and don't forget to comment below so that uh, I can uh, make the video on the contents that I missed or the questions that I didn't cover in this video because you know in one shot it's very difficult to remember and cover everything because I finished my masters like almost two years or one and a half years back. Regarding there was a big question like some of the people are joining to Delft so as I'm from India they wanted to know my experience of comparison of the masters in Tudelft Delft to that of India. So I, I have not done my masters in India obviously but I know what is the difference in few points based on what I've heard from my friends who are doing masters in uh, maybe IIT or NITs or state universities. So the main component is that the structure is completely different as I've said before. It's quarterly based system so you have a lot more work to do. You don't have a semester based system although in the transcript or the grade sheet sometimes they mention it as semesters to be aligned with the international standards but the system is quarterly based system so in India you have a semester based systems and I don't think most of the subjects have uh, group project work and daily assignments they have but most of them you need to appear an exam at the end and you need to pass that exams and you have a compulsory teaching uh, in some cases which also helps you later to have a teaching experience uh, it's not compulsory but people do it to earn some money but here it's not compulsory and the master's program is more based on applied work or research work not re exactly research but applied so not every subject has exams in our computer science almost 50 percent of the subjects did not have exams so how did they grade it they only computed the grades in the daily assignments group project work and so had you need to write a short article based on the papers that you read and then you need to also review your peers so it's a lot different system and the major difference that i find is the way they formulate the courses so the co courses or the content of the courses change every year they base it 90 percent of the faculties base the courses on the research published recently so they don't don't follow any particular books books are just for references but I have answered this in Quora many times. So what they do is like they follow latest 10 year or 5 year publications and then they compile them to form the lab work which mostly consists of what have been published and the codes that have been used for those publications that are released in GitHub or I'm talking about computer science labs. You can uh, map it to different faculties depending on their requirements. And the theory is also based on this publication so you get the latest cutting-edge technology and the theory when you are attending these courses and although it is not compulsory but it is highly recommended to attend all these lectures which will help you a lot late later uh, when you do your thesis or even you do the assignments even if you don't have exam and it is 
voluntary like you don't need to come to lectures some lectures are also recorded so you can watch them later in your laptop or something if there is an overlap between different courses i don't think i covered everything about the differences between the masters in india and netherlands but these are the basic important ones and correct me if i'm wrong most universities in netherlands have a master's kick off so what happens is when you arrive initially uh, first time in netherlands uh, ideally they receive you also from the airport depending on which university you attend delft had a such a program and there's a long introduction program where you basically it is for fun purposes and you also meet new people and know about the culture and everything else the food and you build your network from the beginning right from day one and the thing is that in the master's kick off what happens in each faculty they take you to a location very serene calm and nice location in netherlands and you spend like two to three days uh, you live in some kind of a hostel with like a dorm with eight or ten people which may be international if you're lucky i consider because you meet and know uh, right from day one how you need to adapt and other kind of things and in the master's kickoff they give you a brief overview of all the different research groups in the faculty so that you can plan right from day one uh, the thesis or the research group that you will attend to do the thesis in the second year so i will talk about that later like how, why you should uh, start thinking about the research group and the thesis and other things so what happens is like in our computer science we had like eight or nine research groups something on graphics and visualization something on ai something on web science something on machine learning deep learning something on pattern recognition and other kind of things and then you choose which one you need to attend so that you can attend that group and do your thesis in the second year i'll talk about that very soon so how would you select this ects so that you can plan smartly uh, it is purely based on my experience every student has its own trajectory of progress so what i recommend is initially although you are trying to adjust you should always try to choose more courses so ideally if you should do three courses in one quarter try to choose four or five depending on uh, how you can combine them together so what happens is when you're always ahead then at the end you don't run into the danger of not completing your masters in the scheduled time period of two years because for us as internationals or non-europeans it's difficult to pay that high extra money when your masters gets extended beyond two years so what I did was I was taking four or five courses in some quarters because of that I could complete the 75 ECTS instead of five quarters I completed in four quarters and then I had like 45 ECTS instead of three quarters I had four quarters that is like a year to complete them so it was plenty much amount of time for the thesis and that was something new for me coming from India so then I could plan it and spend my time accordingly so that I can uh, do the thesis properly and not extend my masters beyond two years how do you do that like what I did was like sometimes you are allowed to take like 25 ECTS or maybe four or five courses from other faculties to just for your knowledge so 100 will be somewhere 100 or 90 cities will be from the faculty that you are going to graduate and rest of the courses depending on your interest maybe something like i took a course on entrepreneurship and innovation or something like that which you want to develop your extracurricular activities so that you have scope for that and if you choose those courses and try to accommodate them one in each quarter then you can consider them as like the easy courses and there will be some other courses like that you need to go through the course profile i cannot explain that and have two or three core courses which are relevant for your future or for your faculty and then if you make this combination then it helps you to have like four or five courses in each quarter and by the end of one year instead of 60 you might be able to finish 75 or nevertheless you might be able to finish 65 or 70 and still you are way ahead than others and that will help you to give you the confidence the boost in the second year 
to move ahead so there is a no right answer that how you choose this easy or difficult courses but this is a way you need to come and look at the course profile you will know when you read the content of the course like which course will be easy and which course will be little bit difficult depending on the amount of lab work and projects and group assignments and what the course entails everything is always mentioned in the course browser of each university is online and offline you may also start looking into it before your awareness if you want to have a uh, head start that's what we say next moving on to the thesis structure importance and requirements so the thesis depending on the faculty you choose uh, ranges between 45 to 60 cts uh, yes this is another room in the prague hotel so in my case it was 45 ECTS which is ideally you should spend three quarters and if it is 60 then you should spend four so what you do in the thesis is like uh, I've mentioned this before in many videos it is like a mini PhD not exactly PhD but you do a short literature study of what are the shortcomings or the background of what you what research you are doing in the area that you choose and then you try to suggest some new changes or you build up on the previous work and repeat something and add a short innovation or a short uh, additional requirement or additional on top of what has been already done before so while doing the courses if you have this kind of assignments where you are writing short summaries by uh, reading research papers then you develop that habit of reading research papers which will help you later when you start your thesis because even if you do an industrial thesis which I'm going to talk about next you still need to uh, know how to read the papers summarize the important points and then you need to understand how can you uh, use them to your advantage like to formulate the uh, gaps in the literature and then your research questions I won't focus on the research questions because I've made many videos on that I will link them in the description below or in the information card how you frame your research questions once you have the literature review the, or the literature knowledge what has been done before so we have the ECTS we have the structure and ideally you have like weekly or bi-weekly meetings with a daily supervisor when you do a master thesis normally the daily supervisor may be assistant professor or a professor or maybe a phd or a postdoc because professors are really busy with projects so they meet you very rarely and they delegate the work to a phd or a postdoc and normally master thesis is like a subset of the work of a PhD so if your work is good enough then that short amount of work can give you give rise to a good publication and it will also help the PhD to have a publication as a second or third author if you contribute more and in a way it benefits both so it's a win-win from both the parties so why is it important so some people might be thinking like I don't want to do research then why so it helps you to develop your critical thinking and analytical ability when you summarize lot of text and then try to formulate a short uh, description or a critical analysis of how what are the gaps and what your uh, contribution that's why you have the industrial thesis so people who want to most of the people want to work after masters they don't want to go into phd which might be boring for many so what they do is like do industrial thesis in the industrial thesis you try to formulate the aims of both the industry partners and the university so sometimes each research group has tie up with different companies like in our case there was philips Deloitte and other companies but if they don't have that then you can also suggest if you know some companies where you want to do your thesis 
and then your supervisor and uh, thesis head i mean the industrial head who is going to look after your thesis is going to talk and they try to align the goals so because it's not like internship so even if you work with the industry at the end of the day you need to write a short report like a 80 pager 50 pager or a 100 pager which will be your which you are going to present at the end as a report for your thesis defense yes in Netherlands you have a defense so just like a PhD you are before a committee you need to present your master thesis and you present this report and they ask you some questions you give a short presentation and I will talk about this later like about thesis defense or master thesis that's a vast huge topic there is something also called thesis exchange programs many have asked about that before so in the thesis exchange programs generally half of the thesis or maybe the full one depending on the faculty like 30 ECTS or 45 ECTS you can do with a foreign university maybe in US or Japan or something like that but normally most faculties have tie up with universities in US or Korea or something like that you need to ask after you arrive here with the, your faculty and a research group which you choose so what you can do is like you get funded if you attend those programs by the host university where you, go, where you are going to attend or from TU Delft I, I think it is from the host university and you gain experience from different universities and it helps you a lot in the long run even if you do a PhD or you are working later so you can do a thesis exchange program that is an option available if most people don't know it then note it down and I don't want to talk anything more about that and regarding the th industrial thesis I missed one point you get paid in industrial thesis which is roughly between 500 to 800 euros on an average per month so if you do the industrial thesis for nine months then you can calculate how much you get or maybe for 12 months which is the extreme case so it helps you to sub sustain your living costs in Netherlands if you have the money in the industrial thesis obviously if you do industrial thesis you get paid you also get paid for your transport if you're going far public transport unlimited pass next i will just touch briefly on the career fairs i have mentioned that in details in the working netherlands video i'll leave the details in the description below so every university has a career fair where you get to know about the companies or the where you can work after you finish masters and sometimes if you are near the end of your masters normally they also give you appointment where you can meet them later and schedule a online test or the interview depending on your experience and everything otherwise you apply via online and you get the information from those companies and then you get selected so all these details I have covered them in short in that working in Netherlands video which I'll give it in the description below just watch it if you need to know more about working in Netherlands career fairs and thesis and internships and other kind of stuff and the last point so life after master so you can choose two options obviously either you go for PhD that is continue the research or you can work in Netherlands and there is no definite answer that whether it is easy or difficult but as per my experience if you start searching early that I mentioned also in the working in Netherlands video check it then it's very easy to find a job in Netherlands because of the thriving startup culture and about the PhD if you follow my whole channel it's mostly about PhD which I started in the beginning now I've expanded it you'll get to know everything so that also I won't cover I'm just trying to promote my previous videos because you need to build a library like a meta document meta knowledge so that everyone can be get the benefit out of it so I hope you like this video and if you like this video then don't forget to smash the thumbs up button and please don't forget to subscribe to the channel share the channel among your friends and leave your questions below if you don't leave I won't know so if you leave your questions below then i'll make another video covering the questions that i left and i hope this helps to the incoming master students tunnels, and maybe the incoming master students will come later so i hope it helps and goodbye from prague see you
Peace.